This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to install a liquid cool heatsink processor assembly into a Dell Precision T7810 workstation. Um, so, if you've never been to GreenPCGamers.com, you should definitely check it out. In the description of this video, we are going to post a link to our Precision T7810 blog page. Um, this page will be very helpful to you because number one, it's going to show you the uh, part number. Um, to the liquid cool heat sink assembly that we plan to install in this video and it's also going to show you a whole bunch of awesome upgrade ideas uh, like processor upgrades memory upgrades graphics cards nvme drives and other peripherals um, that are just awesome for this model workstation um, so also um, we originally were planning on installing a oem intel uh, liquid cool heat sink um, the problem that we ran into was that that liquid cool heat sink um, just had a, too large of a radiator to mount inside of our T7810 chassis. Uh, we even, you know, we tried to get creative with mounting on the outside of the chassis, and it's just, it's tacky, and it, we, you know, we couldn't figure out a good way to do it. Um, hopefully, we do in future videos. Um, but for this one, for this video, we ended up using a Precision T7910 liquid cool heatsink um, because they have a heatsink where it has the radiator, the fan. And the uh, the heatsink that attaches to the actual uh, processor all uh, stacked on top of each other. Um, so as you see later in the video, um, we're gonna have to make some modifications to our chassis, uh, but we were able to successfully install it um, and do a benchmark test that we'll show you at the end of the video. Um, and we also want to tell you we are uh, for this test um, and this install we are using a E5 2637B3 processor. Um, it's on the page right here, 3.5 gigahertz, um, quad core, 3.7 gigahertz, max turbo frequency. Um, so it's a good high clock speed CPU that we like to use for gaming. Um, and it'll be a good, uh, good processor to run a stress test on um, to see how, you know, how warm it gets compared to a stock uh, T7810 heatsink. All right, so let's get to our actual install. We've got our T7810 sitting here on its side. Um, we are going to remove the side panel. And as you can see, we have an RTX 2080 Ti installed. Um, you know, check out GreenPCGamers.com. We'll post the video on how to install that card as well if you want to see that. All right, so we're going to remove our optical drive cage because we can no longer have that installed because our new heat sink is just too big um, to actually have the optical drive cage installed. So we do lose the, the feature of that. Uh, we have a metal bracket that we have to remove as well. And so you will lose um, the ability to use your optical drive, which is not a big deal. You know, you can load stuff on your system other ways. All right, we're going to remove our stock heat sink. Um, there are four screws. We're going to remove it uh, diagonally, um, and we are using a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, we like to do this by hand, uh, mainly so you don't snap off any of those screws. And then once all the screws are loosened, uh, we can unplug the power for our fan on the system board. All right, so now that that's removed, we're going to go ahead and use some toilet paper to clean up the old existing heat paste because uh, we're going to apply some new heat paste uh, to our processor before we put our new uh, liquid cool heat sink on the system. All right, so I get that nice and clean, and toilet paper does a great job. All right, we're going to use some Shinetsu Microsci heat paste. Um, it's the best. You should check it out. I think you can get it on like Amazon and other places. Uh, we're going to put a, uh, about a pea size drop right in the center of the processor. And when we put our heatsink on, that will evenly spread once it heats up. So here's our liquid cool heatsink assembly. Um, and it's all stacked on top of itself. You know, we've got our fan, we've got a radiator, and we've got the, the copper um, cooling assembly on the bottom. And then we've got our 5-pin power, so we don't need any adapters for this one. Um, here's our our clip that we screw onto the motherboard that our new heatsink assembly will slide onto. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna diagonally screw this in. Um, we're gonna hand screw it in, and we're not gonna over tighten it because there do, there does need to be a little bit of play when we put our liquid cool heatsink onto this assembly. All right, so tighten it. And then we do need to remove that memory shard on the left side because they're just it gets in the way when we actually have to turn our liquid cool heats in clockwise to lock it into place. All right, so those are nice and tightened. Not too tight, though. 
uh, because like I said, we do need play and you don't want to snap off those screws. All right, so we're going to remove our sh uh, memory shroud. All right, now we are going to show you the clips on the bottom of this liquid heat sink assembly. There are four clips that you have to line up with this bracket that we've already installed on the system board. Make sure your fan, or your, not your fan, but what, your power connection is turned towards the center of the chassis. And you kind of install it diagonally and then twist it to the right, so clockwise. And it'll be kind of tight, but it'll, it'll, it'll go on pretty easily. And then you just have to plug your power in. All right, so that's installed. It's pretty simple. We put our memory straw back on. We're putting our side panel on, but you don't want to do this. We're going to thumbs down to this uh, because you do need airflow for your new liquid cool heatsink assembly. So for now, we are going to leave our side panel off. But if you do want to put your side panel on, we're going to back up here a little bit. You're going to want to either cut a hole in this region of your side panel or drill a bunch of holes in the side panel. Uh, to give airflow so if you're like working in an office environment and you can't leave your side panel off uh, you're gonna have to get creative and, and cut a nice clean hole here obviously not while the side panel is on the system uh, make sure and pull the side panel off um, and you will have some obstructions in here we plan to drill this hole on a future video uh, which we may or may not show you know hit us up if you want to see it and we'll we'll think about uh, showing it to you guys all right so don't put the don't put the side panel back on right away unless you drill holes need airflow okay all right so this is probably what you've been waiting to see all right so we did a 10 minute cpu stress test um the stock heat sink is on top here uh we were able to get that up to 65 degrees celsius which is not actually too bad at all like stay below 70 degrees um again it wasn't the craziest stress test but it it definitely stressed out the cpu we had it running at like 99 percent to 100 percent um, the liquid cool heat sink does really, really well, though. It kept it kept us at a, a temperature of 51 degrees max. Um, most of the time, it was actually below that. Um, so it did a pretty good job. Uh, we also, you know, we, we did some games with the system. We played a little bit of PUBG. Uh, we we got the liquid cool heat sink up to 65 degrees on uh, all high settings on PUBG, um, you know, which is not surprising because PUBG is not, not very optimized. Uh, but it actually did a pretty good job. 65 is not bad for PUBG because we generally generally would be in the 70s um, with our Dell stock heatsink. Um, so it, you know, overall, the liquid cool heatsink did a pretty good job, pretty substantial um, reduction in uh, temperature. Um, although we do lose our optical drive when we install it into a T7810 workstation. Um, so um, you'll have to decide whether um, you know this is actually a good heat sink um, assembly to install for you um, again if you do a lot of high-end computing um, you know, and you put a lot of stress in your processor you know it's probably a good idea to, to install this um, go to greenpcgamers.com we'll show you the part number um, we again we posted the link to the t7810 blog page in the description um, check us out on socials uh, we're on twitter facebook um, and instagram we do monthly giveaways on our facebook page um, so definitely check that out um, if you like free stuff um, and as, as always, if this video was helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, thank you so much for watching.